Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we review hundreds of poker hands from online poker vloggers and bring you 10 of the best. In this week's episode, we have excellent questions, excellent reads, and yep, that really is a seven minute tank. Okay, let's get started. At number 10 this week, and Branson is playing in a 1-3 game at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And there's not a whole lot to say about this hand other than, well, well, well. Riding off the high of that win, I pick up King Queen of Diamonds in the low jack. There's a straddle to $10, so I open to $35, the cutoff and straddle call, and we're three ways to a flop that comes King 4-7 rainbow. I bet $40, then the cutoff does something weird and min raises to $80. The straddle folds and it's back to me. The only draw he could have is 5-6, otherwise he might be trying to juice me with a set or weird two pair. I also think it's possible he could just have a king and wants to see where he's at. I don't like it, but I call and the turn comes an eight. Now the only draw makes a straight. I check and he continues betting for $100. It's a small bet and I could still be ahead with a better king, so I call. The river is a three, not changing anything, and I check again. At this point, I think a king will just check back, but that's not what he does. He goes all in for over $300. I debate calling or folding, but I, I gotta be beat here, right? I let my cards go. He's nice enough to show his hand for the vlog, and he flips over King Jack off for a worse king. No! Ah! Ah! At number nine this week, and Andrew Nimi, he's at the lodge, playing in a 5-10 game. And we're not sure, would you fold the king in this spot? In the very next hand off the deck, action folds over to me, and we look down at a premium, two red queens. It's a good spot to pick up a hand like this immediately after getting stacked, because you won't get a lot of respect. And that's what I'm hoping for when I make it $175 to go. They barely had one table at night. Just him and his parents sitting, trying to make people come in. And we got ladies against seven deuce again. Ooh, this is a good spot for Nimi, I gotta say. I know. The only hand that Doug can potentially win with tonight, but in bad shape here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens here when it gets back to Andrew. More than likely, he's going to put in a re-raise, and then it's going to be really interesting to see what Doug decides to do. Does he get sticky? Andrew just got felted too, so on bullet number two, does he really want to... You can like build a pot pounds. here, back-to-back -back yeah, hands, and he needs a premium. Yeah, DQ going to put a little, put in a little bit of money that he is very unlikely to get back. Wow, and Tony's waking up with jacks. It's always something, something so it's not. Tony not folding, or at least put his hard hat on and go set my here. What will Andrew do when the action gets around to him? Looks like Tony's counting out a raise. He does make it, looks like around, oh, he's all in. Now Andrew disgusted. This would be pretty nasty if Andrew gets sort of accidentally bluffed here. That's Mike Brady in the commentary, and he's quickly become one of my favorite commentators anywhere. And he's right that this is typically not the most comfortable spot, with the pocket queens facing a cold four-bet jam, with the three-better still behind me. But there is zero chance that I'm folding these queens. So you guys play here every week? Or? <laughs> Boys enjoying themselves tonight, an all-star lineup from the Lodge. You guys deserved it, all our subscribers. Oh, well, now you can't lose. 25 Oh, my bad. I just gave him a good juju. 48 dollars 45 no, man. We also had a $99 super the chat there that want to try and find and scroll up. You guys got a generous audience here, don't you? Always, you always a loyal fan base here, this. Mike. Mike, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how generous folks are with us. We love him. Andrew does stick it in with the Queens. Doug wisely gets out of the way with seven deuce. Isn't going to try to win that extra thousand or nine hundred. From Andrew, put in a tough spot. It always hurts a little bit after you've been felt to wake up with the premium and then you're put to the test. But Andrew, with the correct read, makes the call. Way in the lead here. Brad's got a uh, cup on the top here. A little bit dangerous. 
not something we usually love on the stream table. We'll allow it. Hey. He's earned his due. I mean, he's an owner. He'll just pay for a new one if he breaks the table. Play it a lot. <laughs> oh, man. Big Tony up against it here. <laughs> DQ still in there with the King 5 suited. He's thinking about maybe taking a crack at this. He'd actually be in somewhat decent shape with one overcard and a suited hand. DQ goes deep in the tank here. He's genuinely thinking about taking a crack at it with a suited King and putting the hurt on two players, but eventually he lets it go. And we see we're in great shape to double up here and get back to even. Did he fold? Did DQ officially fold? Is he just kind of showing? Okay. He did fold. A little face time for DQ. He's there. So we got the Red Queens versus the Red Jacks. No sandwich back here. Looks like they're maybe going to run it twice. Usually what we do when each player has a pair. Oh, I knew it! On the flop, we'll bet a sandwich. So if you hit your set, you win a sandwich. You don't have to win the hand. But if, it, if there's no sets, then it's just a push. King 5 would have made two pair. Gross. Let's see if Nimi can hold on board number two here. I believe he will. No, Jack in the window. Jack's full. Need an ace or a queen for Andrew. No luck. They're going to chop it up. A little bit of dead money there. So both players are going to make a little bit. Sorry for playing like a nit. Wow. The Texas variance is real, and it looks like it's not going to be that easy finding a way back to even. In at number eight is Todd Swardensky. He's playing at the Horseshoe in Indianapolis in a 2-5 game. And is there any way at all to get away from this hand? Moving along, I top back up to the cap with $1,000 here, and I'm on the button with pocket sevens. Our friend who's still been running over the table and playing almost every hand opens low jack to $15. High jack and I both call, and the small blind decides to three bet to $115. Low jack calls, the high jack folds, and I think with a couple opponents here at this stack depth, I can call and hope to hit a set. So that's what I do. The flop is king seven deuce with two diamonds here. We drill middle set in position in a three bet pot. We're super happy. And we're even happier when the small blind checks and low jack bets 150 into $360 here. I go ahead and make the raise because I would like to get the money in as soon as possible and I raise it to 375. The small blind, who is my only concern here of having pocket kings, gets out of the way and low jack decides to jam all in for a thousand dollars. I don't think we have any other option but to call, so that's what I do. I call pretty quickly and he shows us the disaster of pocket kings. So we are now drawing to a single seven or running diamonds to win this hand. And unfortunately, I don't even know what the runout was because it wasn't either of those two and we end up getting stacked. Number seven this week and Rob Rickerman is at the Aria in Vegas playing in a 2-5 cash game. And we want to know in the comments, what suggestions do you all have for how to get more value on the turn. Let us know. About 30 minutes later, I pick up pocket sixes and the cutoff. Under the gun straddle is on and it's folded to me. I race to 30. Button, big blind, and straddler make the call. Four way action to a flop of eight, six, four. Another set, middle set, and a multi way pot. Rainbow flop. It's checked to me and I'm definitely making the straight draws pay here. I bet 75. The button, who has been a tighter player, makes the call, and the straddler, the action player, makes the call. No flush draws out there, so we're looking for anything but a five or seven on the turn. We get the best blank possible. Six of hearts on the turn, no way. Quads, just a dream spot here, and a $350 pot, three players. First player checks. What to do here? I debate putting out a small bet to induce a raise, but I kind of decide against that because I want to keep all the straight and flush draws in there now. With uh, the board pairing, players will be less likely to pay for those draws as they'll be worried about full houses. So 
I check, hoping the last player makes a play at this pot, but unfortunately he checks behind. River is a 7 of clubs, which is a pretty good card, completing the straights now. A 9-10 gets there, and uh, a 5 is a single straight. First player leads out for 200, and it's to me. It's the same player I've been battling against, so I'm going for all of it. He has about 450 behind, and if he has a straight, he might pay it off. I jam all in. Player in the middle folds, and it's back to him. He tanks for about 45 seconds before finally making the laydown. Good fold if he had a straight there. Pretty strong play from me, though. I can't really be bluffing with that player behind. He had about 2,000, so I'm sure he uh, realized that and uh, made a good laydown if he did have the straight. Number six this week, and Johnny Vibes is playing in that same game, the 2-5 at the Aria in Vegas. And this really is, Johnny, an outstanding read. Middle position opens for $20. We call the cutoff with queen 10 offsuit. Flop is ace king eight with two spades. Player in middle position from France, he bets $25. We're about $2,000 deep, so this is a mandatory call here. This flop smashes our opponent's opening range, and if we can bink a gutter on the turn, we have a solid chance of winning a big pot. Turn comes down the jack of spades. He now checks and it's time for us to start building a pot. Blocking the Broadway spades is extra nice as we aren't really worried about a river spade. I settle on $75. After a short deliberation, he decides to make the call and we are off to the river ace. He checks and we have a decision to make here. This river spot is really just a soul read spot. Conventional strategy is to bet and fold if they raise but I decide to deviate and just go with my read and make a super nitty check back. Such a nut. <laughs> oh, wow. What do you mean? Beautiful house. Yeah. You're good to check. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you said you're good. Like Me you too. Got I was like... Oh. Almost, almost. Sorry, I didn't want to... Uh, uh, you're good to take. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying now, yeah. In at five, and Huggy is playing in a 2-5 game at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And we think Huggy is asking just the right question here. What do you think the bet size should have been on the river? The very next hand, we've got 5-3 suited in spades in the cutoff. It folds to me, and I raise to 15. Just the big blind call, so we're heads up to the flop, which comes 10-5-7 with two hearts. We flop bottom pair, and when our opponent checks to us, I see bet for 20. He quickly calls, and we get a dream turn of the 5 of diamonds. He checks again, and I scale up the bet a bit, making it 50. He calls quicker now than he did on the flop, and can you believe it, the river gives us a boat when it comes the 3 of hearts. He checks to us the third time, and I'm really hoping he was on the flush draw given the action. At the time, I thought he had about 250 behind, though I think it's actually closer to 400. Given how aggressive I've been, I decided to keep up with that line, ripping it all in, hoping for a call. After a good 30 seconds of deliberation, he eventually folds. Unfortunately, the bet was too large, and if I'd realized how many chips he actually had behind, I would have bet closer to 200 instead. Number four now, and Wolfgang Poker is playing at the House of Kings card club in El Paso, Texas, in a 1-2 game. And we've all played hands like this. The poker gods are just not on your side. Next hand, we look down at ace-king from the small blind. Under the gun raises it up to 12. Our buddy Walker in the cutoff puts in the call. I'm not going to be flat calling here. I make it $40. Both the opponents find a call, so we're going three ways to a flop. What would be an above average flop with ace-king? Oh, I don't know. Maybe ace-ace-king. Bang, we flop a boat. On top of it, the house of kings right now has a progressive high hand. Not exactly sure how much is in it, but we're loving life. We flop a boat, and I start with a check. Not really sure how to play a hand like this when you flop the essential nuts so i start with a check and both other players do as well hoping for a card to peel off on the turn that improves one of them which comes the eight of diamonds not gonna be checking again i bet out for 45 dollars looking to get value from one of the other opponents cutoff gets out of the way and now walker finds a call for 45 dollars i'm loving life now how could the river bring us down oh i don't know if it comes the king of diamonds now we chop versus any ace this is an absolute horrible river card but at the same time we block both the other hands we could be losing two pocket aces or pocket kings so for that reason i rip it all in looking for him to misread a hand and fold a chop that's not what he does though he puts in the call that basically means he has an 
ace. Unfortunately for us, he shows ace jack offsuit. What the heck? Horrible river card here, and we're gonna chop up that pot when we had an essential lock on it. Not even a jack could have saved him there. The only thing was another king, and it came. Oh well, chopping it up with a subscriber, I guess it's not all bad news. And on top of it, we're gonna get the progressive high hand for $100 to add to our stack. Life is good. Number three, and Frankie of the Next Gen Boys is playing in a 1-3 game at the Texas Card House in Dallas. And it just doesn't get better than this, does it? Ding, ding, ding. Welcome to the big pot of the night. We are under the gun with Pocket Kings, the Cowboys. Just gonna limp this one. I think Riddick to my left is going to be raising a lot. I'm gonna put in that beautiful limp squeeze. Let's see it. Riddick plus one. Yes, he's got a raising hand. E3 suited. He bumps up to 20. Toothless calls with the offsuit variation. Bill's coming along with a pretty suited connector. Things get interesting as Trev in the big blind has Pocket Jellos. He puts in a three bet himself to $125. Well, 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 what to do? If I four bet, I think Trev is gonna fold anything under queens here. So I don't wanna four bet and scare everyone out. Although I think a four bet here just to take down all the dead money is a great move as well. I want to get Nicholas involved. Rinnick, I wanna get him involved. I just put in a flat call here. Very, very tricky. We're hoping Rinnick shoves all in behind us, but he just puts in the call. Toothless folds and Bill says that he cannot fold for these pot odds. He puts in the call. Now here we go, four ways in a three bet pot, comes nine high. Oh my Ooh, God. Uh, this is dangerous for Trevor here. Absolutely, also dangerous for Bill has top pair. All right guys, we got the perfect flop for our hand. We have the most equity, it checks to me, and I put in a value bet of $175. This pot is huge, and it gets on over to Bill after we see a fold from Nick. He's going all in. And then let's go to the Jello camera to see what Trev's up to. He's got a little smile. It does not look like he's folding. He's going all in too. The cameras are on me. This is the spot we were hoping for. All I gotta do is put the chips in the middle, which I do. I know Frankie has been waiting for the spot all night. He hasn't really gotten anything going. This would be a big win for him if he could help. If he could hold here. 72% currently to hold. Oh my gosh. Finds and two pair on the, on the turn. turn. And no oh board pairing on the river means gosh. that Bill's got it. 9-8 wow. takes it down versus two over pairs for the whole thing. Oh man. Oh my gosh. What a hand. Almost 2k pot at a 1-3 game. There are definitely some arguments right there on why you do not slow play pre-flop. However, I got in a pretty good spot. Number two this week, and close to broke, is playing in a 10:25 cash game at the Seminole Hard Rock down in Hollywood, Florida. And I can't, but can anyone else beat a seven-minute tank? We look down at Ace-Five suited here from under the straddle. We make it $150. It folds all the way to that straddle player who I was joking along with, and he decides to make the call. And let's tune in and see if you can hear me talking to him. I remember value. I swear to God. I have. I swear to God. Dude, you know it's a good poker game when they say, I swear to God. After a little bit of friendly banter, we go off to a flop that comes as great and as picture perfect as possible. The flop comes 985 with two hearts and a diamond out there. We flop the nut flush draw as well as a pair. We decide to see bet for $200 and my opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call. The turn comes an unbelievable king of hearts. We now have turned the nut somehow. When he checks it over to me, it's time that we get as much money as we can into the middle. And I bet $600, which is a pretty massive sizing. And again, he thinks that we're supposed to be going for value. Or maybe is that a leveling war that we have now set? My opponent goes deep, deep into the tank before deciding on just a call. We have ended up on this river, hoping for a brick. No pairing the board. No straight flush cards out there. And we got exactly what the doctor ordered. It's a jack of spades and I almost instantly jam all I know you're going to call I mean, For $5,400. $5,400. The bet on the turn was $600. We have gone nearly 3x the size of the pot with this river jam. I'm targeting a very specific range. 
I believe that my opponent has a flush. I'm almost certainly positive that he has a flush. And if he doesn't, there is no way in hell that with this board run out, he'd be calling with anything weaker than a set or maybe specifically a hand like King Jack suited or something like that. So when we get to this river, I just think he has to have a flush or a really strong set. He goes deep into the tank. And I am not exaggerating, I'm gonna play it in fast forward. He goes into the tank for over seven minutes. And we're not really at the stake level where calling the clock is a frequent thing or something that's ever comes up. There's very little talk going on. He is talking to himself, but in these stakes, my goal is to never say anything in a spot this big. This is a massive spot for me. And if he calls, this will be the largest pot I've ever played in my entire life and will take me out of the hole pretty significantly and book a pretty profitable win if he makes the call. After an unbelievable tanking session, my opponent ultimately decides on the call, we flip over ace five of hearts and he shows me queen deuce of hearts. He had the second nuts and tanked for over seven minutes. Oh my goodness, the table is going crazy. And as you can see from this film here, Rampage was able to get all of the footage from his angle. Oh my goodness. Let's go. And at number one this week, Rampage Poker, your boy Ethan is playing in a $1,700 buy-in tournament at the Hilton in Aruba. And this hand goes from hero to zero in about two seconds flat. Things are looking up for us, and in this hand, progressing to level 11. I have five deuce of diamonds in the big blind. The low jack opens to 3,200. Small blind makes the call, and these two cards are suited. For one more big blind to call, I'm in here. Let's see a flop three ways. The flop comes king, seven, five, two hearts. Got bottom pair, but not a whole lot going on for us. Action goes check, check, check. Get to see a free turn, which comes the magical five of hearts. So sick here. Unfortunate that the heart draw does get there, but I shouldn't be too concerned given the passive action on the flop. The small blind decides to lead out for 5,000. And with trips here, my hand is as good as it can get. Time to raise it up and get stacks in. I put in a raise to 14,000. The low jack player gets out of the way and folds. And onto the small blind player, player to my right who I just doubled up in the big hand with pocket fives. He decides on a call. Let's see a big one, hoping to see a brick. The river is a brick deuce. Improves us to a full house. And out of nowhere, this hand is a huge bink. If somehow we were beat against a flush on the turn, then, well, certainly I'm happy to get it all in and double up through this opponent. He checks again, and with about 30,000 in stack, I decide to go for it and jam all in. He snap calls, and I don't know what that means, but I've got a full house. This player shows us 5-7 for a larger full house. Ah, oh, shit. That sucks. GG's to the first bullet of this main event. What an absolute roller coaster ride, and just dumped off all of my chips to the player to my right. Good luck to you. Is there any worse feeling in poker than rivering a full house, only then to lose to a bigger full house? Ugh. Well, that's it for this week, folks. We hope you enjoyed it. Let us know if you did in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll look forward to seeing you all again next week. Until then, good luck at the felt.